Hello and welcome to Reinfused. Today we are taking a look at this beast here, which is the Acorn A3000. Uh, now the full history of Acorn is a bit much to go into on this video, as is uh, a lot of the deeper technical discussions as to why these machines were so important to well, what became of Acorn. But uh, the uh, let's do the crib notes on it. So the simple version is, so Acorn had made a, had found a lot of success in the educational markets with the with the BBC Micro and the various models of that, the B, the Master, etc. But they hadn't really broken into the home market too much. They had the Electron, which was the cut down version of the BBC B, but it didn't really make any inroads into the Sinclair and Commodore uh, stranglehold on the market in the UK. They really kind of they, they wanted they knew they needed to do something different to try to break through on the market. Plus, uh, there was the advent of these 16-bit machines, such as the Amiga and ST, coming up, and they knew they needed something to combat that. And what they did is uh, they went away from the MOS Technology 6502, uh, a chip made famous in the VIC, etc., and instead decided to go their own route. Now, what they did is they took up some research that was on risk based processes and decided to make a whole brand new kind of class of processes based on that. Now the difference between RISC and CISC, again it's a bit of a, a technical heavyweight one, but the simplest description of it is basically that CISC um, processes, which are the ones we know today mostly from Intel and what have you, uh, or complex instruction set chip, something like that, and uh, they effectively, every time they want to do something new or probably wants to do something they make a new instruction for it uh, so say you wanted to increment an address by one instead of writing out that whole the whole instruction to do that instead you'd have one operation and you call that and it would just do it now this made it very quick because you could literally just uh, perform tasks very quickly in uh, what we call one cycle which is basically effectively one turn on a roundabout and You'd be uh, and you'd be able to uh, string a lot of commands in a very short space of time. Now the drawbacks of that are every time you add new instruction, you're increasing the number of transistors, which increases the energy use and the heat, etc., etc., etc. Now what our, what a RISC chip does, which is reduced instruction set, is instead it does away with all that, and so it has only a very simple set of instructions, and it basically relies on the programmer to do more work to perform their tasks. So they do more instructions which can take longer to do, but again, the benefits are in less power use, less temperature, and we see that now, because so ARM chips are effectively probably, I would argue, the most important chips in the world today. They power so much stuff, primarily what we, <laughs> everyone pretty much has in their pocket, which are mobile phones. And that's really kind of the thing that saved, not Acom per se, but the the spirit of Acorn, where they rolled off this risk uh, development, uh, put it into its own company called Arm, and that's the company that basically makes up the designs for risk chips that get licensed by other companies like Qualcomm to make their own chips. That's that potted history. <laughs> we'll carry on. So, using that chip, Acorn built uh, the Archimedes, which was, it looked like almost like a, a traditional desktop PC where the keyboard was separate and mouse and everything. And you had a base unit with a monitor on top and the keyboard out separately. Which is why I would say that this, the A3000, is possibly the more important of the models. For various reasons, it uses the, the kind of the second edition of the ARM chips. It also has a more advanced operating system, which we'll get to a bit later. But also, it returned Acorn to their single-body units. Now, again, this is very much like the Amiga and ST. They're also single-bodied units. But it was also a design that had really made Acorn famous. I mean, most of their machines before that point were single-bodied machines. And so this was a real return to that. And that's why I think this is this is quite important in terms of the history of Acorn. So anyway, yeah, in terms of specs, as I said, this uses the ARM chip, the ARM2 chip specifically. It's 
was our 32-bit chip when most of the home computers at that point were, were 8 or 16-bit, with a 26-bit addressing bus, so depending on who you are, you may decide it's not a 32-bit chip. It, it's all dependent on things, but it's, it's a 32-bit chip, in my opinion. And it came with various different memory configurations with expandable memory. So say this one actually has 4 megs installed, but they could come with between 1 and 4 installed. Now, aping the continuation of the, the, say the Amiga and the ST, this also came with a floppy drive installed. This one has been replaced with a GoTek, just because floppy disks are getting increasingly hard to find, working ones anyway. Uh, a nice proper keyboard, a bit soft, but it's still very nice to type on. Uh, if we go to the back, we can see this bit is usually closed up, but I've just removed uh, an Ethernet card because I wish to replace it with a hard drive module. Uh, this is the module update, so this allows you to add in some expansions. Uh, an analog RGB monitor socket, which uh, you can quite easily build a SCAR uh, cable for, so that's pretty good for adding to uh, a television setup. Mono video, if you want to do composite mono video out, that will give you that. A uh, headphone socket, because the sound obviously does not come out of any of these ports. So you need that to get the sound out. Uh, parallel printer socket. The uh, serial, which didn't come as standard. It came as an option. This one I don't believe has it in. The Econet, which was Acorn's proprietary uh, networking system. Now, normally this also didn't come pre-installed. But this machine, I believe, used to go belong to a school. And they tended to have that installed, and this one did indeed have it installed. I've now uninstalled it to give more space for the hard drive module. Now this is, uh, it's not massively heavy, but it's not light either. If we get underneath here, and this will be interesting. I don't think we can quite get the right angle, but there you go, you can just about see it. So this is where the mouse goes. It's uh, quite annoying, but... Uh, not as annoying as the Atari ST, so that's not so bad. The case itself is held together, uh, and this is a wonderful example of the cheapness of, well, let's say building to cost that the uh, computer industry had in the UK. So these two screws here, and there's one on the other side as well, if you undo that, it's basically just a piece of metal that is stopping this plastic this plastic thing from going in to allow the case to come off, and that's it. <laughs> Which is just a wonderful design. Uh, so the mouse. The mouse is, uh, and this is kind of the the first really style of mouse that came out. It's three buttons. Uh, unlike the PC where you, a three button mouse meant you had like a, an extra button that did like macro based stuff or maybe combined functions, this actually needed three buttons. So each button did something different. So the middle button kind of does what you'd expect the right click to do, and the right click one is more like an actiony thing. So yeah, it, is, uh, it doesn't need it. This works pretty well considering how old it is. Uh, yeah, made by Logitech. Don't so, say it's too shiny, but anyway, yeah, a uh, weird proprietary connector, but, but of course, although it does have a header on the inside which you can use to just add a uh, ST or Amiga mouse to it with a bit of wiring. Yeah. So that's the machine. Now mine's missing, there should be an Acon badge there, which mine is missing. As you can see, if I just turn this around again. Oh, there you go. Uh, you can see here, this actually says uh, the British Broadcasting Corporation, because this is indeed one of the models that were supplied to schools. There are other models that don't have the BBC logo there. It just says uh, A3000. Uh, and yeah, and that's the power and disk activity light, which does fire with the GoTek, which pleases me immensely. Right, that's the machine. It is slightly fantastic. This one, weirdly enough, of all the machines that I've collected, and including the Sam Coupe, which is a machine I wanted as a child, like you would not believe, I fantasized over that machine as a Spectrum owner. Uh, and I was thrilled to be able to get one for a vaguely decent price. Vaguely decent compared to what most of the market was selling at. This machine gave me more nostalgia willies than anything else. It genuinely did. And weird enough, it was the mouse that did it. The mouse, playing with this mouse really threw me back to school. It was, it was insane. Yeah, so this, it's just odd that I've got so many more nostalgic feelings for this machine than I do for the Spectrums and 
Amstrads and Commodore, certainly, because I wasn't a big Amstrad or Commodore user back then. I used them on with friends machines, but that's it. Uh, and certainly uh, the Electron again for the same reason. But say all the Spectrums, I've got all models of the Spectrums, and whilst they do give me like the nostalgic buzz you'd expect, not as much as this one does, which is, uh, I guess, because this is a machine that I, I used an awful lot because our schools had them. Our schools had the BBC Micro, which gave me not as much of a buzz as this, but some. But this was the machine really when I guess I kind of realised how powerful machines could get back in the day. <laughs> because the stuff this was running, like uh, Lander, which was a demo of a game which eventually became Zarch, which was just basically a 3D shooter, which I'll show uh, later on. That was like a 3D graphical, filled-in, shaded game, and it was brilliant. And coming from a from a time when Elite was on the spectrum, when it was just wireframes, which was massively impressive, but seeing those same things running even faster, but filled in with colour, yeah, that was insane, and the explosions and stuff that happened with pixels flying everywhere. Uh, yeah, amazing machine, and uh, I'm really glad to have one, actually. I've been after one for a while, but they go for a lot of money, so... This one was, uh, it was suspicious, <laughs> let's say, in its, uh, in whether it worked or not. And so the price was quite low and I made an even lower offer and it was accepted. Uh, when I opened it up, yes, there's a battery inside these machines and that battery does leak and it's unfortunately right on the motherboard and so it can damage it. And it's right by the ROM chips, which is even worse, obviously, because, uh, yeah, those are definitely necessary. So I think I've basically saved this one. It's certainly working fine, and I've, I managed to clean up and I've neutralized the uh, alkaline from the batteries with uh, vinegar, which is an acid, uh, and then cleaning that off with isopropyl alcohol. So I think this one's fine. Uh, one component did pop off, and I've not been able to find a suitable replacement for it. It's, it's a ceramic capacitor. I will find one, but it doesn't seem to hamper <laughs> its use. So the battery certainly keeps a charge. The new battery I put in, because you can get new... Uh, safer batteries for these, so lithium ion batteries. And, um, yeah, that seems to work, and it certainly keeps its settings and stuff, and there's no more errors when it boots up. Alright, enough waffling, let's get to the games. Okay, so before we get to the games, this is the operating system, this is Risk OS. Now, if we look here, we can see this is basically a task manager which tells us how much memory we're using. You see, we've got a total of four megs there. And we'll see various little uh, applications currently running in there. Now, if I press a different button, you see we get different options. So that was the middle button, which just gives you extra bits. So see, I'm running version 3.11. I upgraded this. This originally came with 3.0. Uh, 3.11 just fixes a couple of things. New tasks, you can type stuff in. That's the display you just saw. And... Yeah, and the third button does the same as the first button in that case. Uh, here's the uh, applications. So obviously paint. Now if I double click in this, you see it doesn't turn immediately open up. What happens instead is it opens an instance down here. So this is effectively what we'd uh, call like the taskbar on most other operating systems. So if we just click on that, there we go, it opens up. And we can create a new one. There we go. Yeah, we can paint. Oh, there we are. Wonderful. Yep, yeah, it's a it's a painting program. <laughs> so yeah, that's effectively just kind of what you'd expect from any kind of operating system of the age, really. That similar things, word processor, a kind of a, a a more vector style drawing program rather than paint. Uh, various configuration options. Again, that is something that loads down here, so that's still in memory. Oh, that's a loaded two there. So this just gives you an idea of what you've got in there, so you can put ID hard drives. We don't actually have one in there at the moment. Uh, the floppies, obviously that's the GoTech. No, I didn't mean to do that, just close it down. <laughs> Net is greyed out, because I said I removed the, uh, the actual network capabilities of this machine, because I needed it for other stuff, and there's various other options as well, including setting up a RAM disk. I've got like a one meg RAM disk, because it can be useful for just unpacking programs and stuff. When I get the hard drive, I will no longer need that. 
So we can, uh, yeah, right click just opens that up. But if I do the middle click, I get this and then I can, well, get some information about it or I can just quit it. So there we go. That's how we quit them. Right. So let's get onto some of the games. Right. So yeah, this is the famous elite. <laughs> Let's just, uh, we'll just try to get into, we'll go straight out and we'll launch immediately. So yeah, the difference between this Elite and obviously the uh, ones on the BBC Micro and the Spectrum, it's filled in. There's colour, much like Zarch. Well, uh, it's nearly uncontrollable with the mouse. Uh, I guess you get used to it. I can't. <laughs> but uh, joystick options are not easy on this machine. So anyway, yes, that's... Yeah, and the sound will be coming through the mic, which, by the way, is a new mic. So I'm not sure what the sound quality is going to be like. This is a, a remote mic that I I got. Uh, I don't know what the sound quality is going to be like. Uh, and it also means I have to remember to turn off another two things, which uh, may not, must not, might not seem like a lot, but uh, this is someone who forgot their own birthday until someone phoned them up. So, yeah, that's um, that's definitely with some flat batteries going on. Anyway... <laughs> That's Elite. I'm sure you know Elite. I think everyone knows Elite. Oh, we've got a bad guy. A bad guy. Yes, so, Cannon Fodder. A game which, if you had an Amiga or an Atari ST, you probably know, certainly. That's certainly where I know it from. A game I love as well. <laughs> Briefing kill all enemy. Fantastic. All right, so you haven't ever played this before. It's literally just the, the idea is you just have to kill all the bad guys. On the Archimedes, it uses the first band, uh, button to the first button to move around and the last button to fire, and that's it. <laughs> that's literally the game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the big thing with this was that all of the soldiers you had had names and the idea was you'd see them die if you failed and things like that. So yeah, that was the uh, Acorn A3000, the uh, Archimedes. It's a fantastic machine and a wonderful blast from the past if you're my age. Uh, my age being when these were just literally coming into schools. Most of my school time was spent around the BBC Micros. And these were kind of the final couple of years of me being at school when uh, the Archimedes started to appear. And also Apple Macs, to be fair, as well, although that was uh, rarer and mostly for people doing uh, secretarial stuff, to be honest. So... So yeah, this um, it's an amazing blast from the past. The mouse especially is just a weird uh, nostalgia kick trying to use it. But oh, these are brilliant machines. They were at least as powerful as the Amiga and the ST of it at the time. But they didn't get many games because it was a bit late in the day. They were still quite expensive and Acom was still really seen as being an educational computer mark uh, computer maker rather than a home computer maker so it's unfortunate but that's that's how it goes really the british computer industry's loss is really the world's gain with <laughs> with arm being split out into a separate company and changing effectively how pretty much all the embedded systems work now anyway <laughs> If you enjoyed the video, please hit like. If you really enjoyed the video, please hit subscribe. If you didn't enjoy the video or you have something else to say, then please leave it in the comment below. See you next time.